Hey! everybody welcome to the most wonderful real estate podcast ever so excited that you are with me today and we're doing another session inside the minds of today's millionaires and this is where we interview different people all walks of life all different businesses we find out what they're ha- what they're doing what they have going on and today i have a super great guest today he is my wicked smart man So we are going to find out what is inside the mind of Mr. Jerome Lewis. So, Jerome, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Hi, Dewan. Thank you for having me. And how am I doing? I am doing okay. I'm doing pretty all right. How about you? Doing pretty all right? Yes. Is that good or is that just pretty all right? (laughs) Like regular. It's like, you know, just normal. (laughs) I'm not excited, not sad. I'm just like here, you know? All right. I love it. Well, let's see if we can't maybe get your excitement level through the roof by the time we're done today. Mm -hmm. So everyone, um, to find me, I'm the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. You can just type in wonderful Facebook, Instagram. I'm literally everywhere, YouTube, everywhere. Um, And our motto at wonderful is people before profits. So that resonates with you. You're at the right place. It's the right time. And I got the right guest. So we start off drum. We always have a toast. So I am drinking my live enzyme drink today. And you have, what do you have there? I have iced tea. So I only drink oh. like three things. I drink iced tea, ginger ale, and water. That's about the only thing I generally drink. Well, so I have know, some this iced is, tea. Um, this is a tea. It's a live enzyme drink. It tastes like lemon. So it's like tea. So I drink water in this. It's called Fortune Delight. But this is all I drink too. And then that's it. I got to drink water. And I drink this lemon tea. And then every now and then I have a glass of wine. So, all right, so cheer, cheers. So we're going to have an actual toast. Cheers. cheers. And everybody that's watching and listening, take a deep breath. Give yourself a stretch. <sighs> Let whatever's in your mind, kick it out for the day, for the time being. And just hang out with us and we're going to have a good time. And when you stretch and you listen and you take a deep breath, it helps you open your mind for learning and listening and fun. Okay, so Jerome, we just jump right in. So uh, so what I like the guests to do in the very beginning is tell us who you are, like in a short one or two sentence, um, how we can reach you. So we just want to know your name, how we reach you, we want to know what you do. And then I am going to ask you a bunch of questions and we're going to backtrack and find out how you got to be. Jerome, the implementation Lewis. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so my name is Jerome Lewis. I specialize in marketing and tech within the real estate industry. And what was the other question? How we reach you. Oh, and how you reach me. If you want to learn, like reach me personally, like Dewan said, people before profits, you want to visit my personal website. It, that's JeromeLewis.com. Okay. That was quick and easy. Okay, so... You said that you are involved in the tech Mm -hmm. side of real estate investing or just tech all in general. So I am, I specialize in marketing and tech within uh, real estate. So I like to help real estate entrepreneurs, that's agents, investors, course creators, you name it. We help them uh, with their marketing and their tech. So real estate investors uh, I know that, you know, as a real estate investor myself, like that investing is my strong suit, talking to homeowners, flipping deals, my strong suit, my weak suit is actually the tech. And there are a lot of investors out there that are not super, super duper tech savvy. Mm-hmm. So if someone like me came to you and I said, listen, I need help on social media. I need help. I don't know, film webinars. I need help doing whatever. What all, what areas and aspects would you help me with? Every single one of them. So it, it, it really depends on the individual and what goals they're trying to achieve. Uh-huh. But we can help you with pretty much everything you're looking for. If you want to create content, we can help you with that. If you want to schedule social media posts, we can schedule it. We can help you with that. If you want to generate leads, you want to run a marketing campaign, whatever you need with uh, within tech or marketing, we can help you do that. So uh, we serve a we provide a service. 
But what's uh-huh. more important about the service is that we who we help, and that's we help real estate entrepreneurs. And you know, honestly, I always tell people because you know, I mean, I do a lot of training and teaching. People are like, "Oh, teach me everything about real estate," and they're like, "Tell me all about marketing." Da, 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 da. I'm like, "Listen." I think everyone should be good at what the thing that they're good at. And then you should hire the people that are good at their thing that helps you with your thing. So I am all about like hiring the tech people, helping, hiring people to help me build webinars, help me build funnels, help me be on social media and do all that. Because if I do all that, plus I try to do investing, I don't have, there's not enough time in the day for everything. Yeah, I agree 100%. And uh, I don't know if it's society or who is pushing that message, but there are people or a group that are telling you to kind of be good at everything. And that's literally impossible. You have to delegate certain things. You have weaknesses, you have strengths. And one of my weaknesses is, is that um, I'm not the best with people, right? But I'll get things done. So, you know, I focus on what I'm really good at. And that's like building out systems and implementation. So I'm sorry. I don't think I've ever had anybody say I'm not good with people. That's so funny. Well, <laughs> like that's, not that's, good with people as in... Uh, not super social or chatty or just don't know how to deal with people or are you just one of those guys that's like so smart you can't read emotions and things no it's not that I just um I, I'm I am a bit of an introvert and um I, I'm just good at like results right how can yeah, I help I'm you get to where you want to get to and sometimes sometimes uh feelings get hurt in that process and it just, well, just is what it is because so. you sound like my husband. My husband, and he's not an introvert. He's a super uh, extrovert, but he's real right to the point. Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And sometimes he says something, I'm like, dude, you got to freaking put a filter on that. You can't just blurt that right out like that because you hurt people's feelings. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I've been married for 20 years now. So now I'm just sort of like used to like, hey, listen, stop in the message. But I, I get what you mean. And, you know, there's a lot of people. There are a lot of real estate investors and there are a lot of speakers that I know personally um, that are actually introverts. But they push themselves, they get up on the stage, they teach, they talk, they do whatever. But but deep down inside, they really are introverts. And there are just a lot of people. And weirdly enough, as outgoing as I am, that's why I love to be in front of the crowd. I'm like, woohoo, all the time. I really like to spend a lot of time by myself in the quiet. And if given the choice of like a whole day out with a bunch of people or just like hanging out with my own self, I would just hang out with myself. So I think I'm like I, I, an extroverted introvert. I think. I think so. Last I checked, I like to I like to study assessments and people because I'm trying to learn. Right. I'm like working on my skills. And I think most of society is introverted. Like that's generally most of society. I think it was about 60 something people are wow. generally introverted. And um, so I understand. And a lot of people think it is, oh, introverts are quiet and they don't want to talk. And it's not really the best definition that I found. The best definition is like how you charge up your energy and how you learn, like how you like to recharge. And I like to recharge by myself. Right. And then I'll go out and explore and extrovert myself with other people. So, yeah, yeah. no, I'm with you. I do these two day workshops and I'm like, woohoo, we're cheering, we're rah, rah, the whole for two days. And then for like a week, I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm exhausted. So, all right. So I love the fact that you help people with marketing and tech. Um, I know, and I do, I don't, and I, I like what you said about you don't know who's pushing the thing that you need to be good at everything. But I also find that people feel like I should be an investor. I should be great at marketing. I should know how to talk to homeowners. I should know how to buy multi-level. I should be able to do social media. I have to make my post look amazing. I have to like I'm having fun every waking moment in my life. And I don't know who pushes that agenda either because I learned, I'm now 63, so I learned a long time ago that you have to be good at what you're good at mm-hmm. and hire or have people help you with the things that you're not good at because you cannot be the master of everything. Yeah. Um, they say, Jack of all trades, master, master of none. That's, that's yeah, and yeah. it's true. And then some people are like, oh, Dwan, you teach 18 different things in real estate and you teach and da, 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 da. So if you're teaching, you're not doing. It's like, dude, listen, I own a fucking town. I bought a town. I'm rehabbing a town. I do, but I like to teach. But I really, it's, it's, I have spent the last, uh, well, you know, I told you my husband's having this crazy bone marrow transplant. So we've been here in this little space right here, like for a long time. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to learn. I'm going to take some time. I can't go out. I can't be around people. We can't be in crowd. I'm going to take some line time. I'm going to learn how to build funnels. I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to learn how to do that. Oh my God. I've watched 10,000 videos and I don't feel like I know any more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> I don't know how to do it. I just need someone to help me. So I have my VA team that I recently hired because I thought, you know, I've got time. I'm going to learn. How hard could it be? But well, honestly, you can't do it all. No, you can't. And can't. Uh, another thing. So that's what people, oh, you do this, you do that. And sometimes people misconstrue it. Like you can do like focus on one thing at a time. So you shouldn't be trying to learn VAs and how to build funnels and real estate and Forex. Like you shouldn't be trying to learn all of these, all of these things at one time, right? You want to focus on one thing and then, all right, I, I kind of mastered this. So I'm really good at this thing. So now I can hit that next level, right? Uh -huh. You master real estate investing and the teaching and stuff that you did. And then you're like, you know what? I have some time to learn this other thing. You're not trying mm -hmm. to learn multiple things at once. So I have watched, honest to God, I started a new YouTube channel. So I'm going to start a new YouTube channel. It's going to be great. It's going to go right to the top. So I watch videos. I mean, like hundreds of videos for the last 30 days up until like two months ago. And I started my channel and it's not getting all this crazy traction, and all this stuff. Like I thought, and I'm like, okay, now I watch it. I know how to do it. I know how to run ads, but I don't really know, really. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I just turned it over to my VA and went, no, y'all just do that. I, I, I have the gist of it, but honestly, who has time? Yeah, it's a lot of time and you shouldn't be behind a computer anyway. You got like a bright personality. So you belong in the front, in the spotlight. I so do. Can see I belong you. in the spotlight. So, yes. but you know, I do like to keep, I do like to at least, I and I do, I am a big believer in, uh, like if, for someone like you, like if you and I were working together, I am a big believer in the, if you're going to hire someone to do a job, even if you don't know exactly how to do it, you need to know the gist of what it is. So, you know, they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I uh, wholesale and, I, you know, we buy buildings and stuff. But now I rehabbed for a decade and I learned how to rehab and how to put in toilets. I learned how to do stuff. So I'm going to hire a contractor to do something. And he says, oh, yeah, it's $1,500 to replace the toilet. It's like, mm, no, that's a 30 minute job. So I feel like, and, and even with people with the tech and the things that it's not their strong suit, I think they should at least know a little bit about what to expect or at least know at least enough about to know if the person's doing a good job for them without like having to master everything. Because you're right, you can't master everything. Yeah, I agree. And I, I like to, so generally when people like want to learn marketing and do everything, there, there's a quote I like to say, like marketing is not something that you uh, learn, it's something that you do. So I generally like to break it up into like three things, right? I break it up into three phases. I like three, three, everything. So with marketing, you got principles, you got strategies, and then you got tactics, right? You as a business owner, you're trying to get help. You might want to know the principles. You might want to know a little bit about the strategies, but there's no need for you to understand the tactics in totality. So that's a I good like way it. I like to make principles, it Principles, strategies, and tactics. I do like that. So tell me what that means. What are the principles? Principles are um, like, it's like the everyday what you live by. So marketing should be about the other person. Let's, that's a principle, right? Marketing is not about you. Uh, marketing should be, you should warrant a response. That's a principle too. A strategy would be something like uh, direct mail or okay. online marketing, digital marketing. And then like, tactics would be like Facebook ads or Facebook marketplace or, um, you know, postcards. Those would be more like tactics, the, the actual practical stuff that you do. So. Huh. See, I just learned all that. I did not know that. I took notes. Yeah. I like it. I've never thought about it being broken down up into like three sections like that. Yeah, threes are, it's easy for people to learn in like threes is what I'm realizing. And also- uh, I'm still like working on and crafting my message. So like, mm -hmm. it's, it's always a, a working progress. Mm -hmm. And I have like, you have to make it for the other person, but you also have to like include your personality in it as well. Mm -hmm. And like, generally I think about things in like war because I'm like obsessed with those times, medieval, oh my God, when they were, you know, fighting in the wars and stuff like that. So uh, I got tactics and strategies from uh, one of my favorite authors, Robert Greene and 33 mm -hmm. Strategies of War. And I like to try to break stuff into those categories because people tend to understand it when you go super technical it can be confusing so still trying to figure out the analogies but that's the one i'm using thus far no i like that and you know the thing is about war i mean it is the way you win is you have to be tactical strategic you have to do all those things otherwise you get your ass kicked so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like that yeah i've never thought about it i see now you're making me giving me a new way to think about things i really like that now jerome how old are you I am 33. 33. I am yes. 63. You are the same age as my my daughter. So um, 
So when you were younger, like 13, 14, 15, like what was that Jerome doing? Where did you live? What were you doing? So 13, I was I was terrible. I was like a little hooligan, to be honest. And I, I tell the story all the time. I don't mind. But 13, 14, uh, I was, I think I was in about ninth grade. So I, we went through a lot, like as, a, as children, uh -huh. uh, my mother, she kind of ignorantly, like she didn't know any better, but she abused us when we were like younger than like 13, 14. So they took us away from her and they put us in foster care. When they put us in foster care, we went through whatever we went through. And then about 13, 14, like the age of X, I was, um, just got back to my mother. And I think I was in like ninth grade and I just had this rebellion or this resistance of, of, about like following the rules. So that's where I was. I was like just being rebellious. And um, were you that troublemaking like, kid getting in trouble, skipping school, doing drugs? I was close to it. I never did. I never was a drug person. I was very violent because I was angry. I was so uh -huh. angry that they took my mother away. And I was also so angry that I didn't have a father. So I would take that anger out in unhealthy ways. I get so, it. Where were you living? I was living in uh, Philadelphia. So at that I'm time, sorry. like 13 to 14, I was in South Philadelphia specifically. Oh. Now, South Philly is a rough area. Is that correct? South Philly is not now. And it wasn't really back then, like the area that we lived in. Uh, it, the best way to categorize it is like it's an urban area. So it's like a right. mixture. It's probably like a B, like we call yep. it B areas. Yep, so, yep, yep. I got yep. it. I know. I totally get that area like that. And so, um, so I know that was, so that was like a kind of a, you know, the thing is, it's really nice about you sharing that with me is um, I always tell people this all the time. Your mask becomes your message. And so yes. when you, when you share the things that happen, like you'll hear when you interview me on your show, I'll share like how I got started in real estate investing. I was a freaking hot disaster of a mess. And when you when you have those times and those periods in your life, and then you turn that around and you become who you are right now, sitting there with your shirt and your tie and you know, and 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 working and helping other people, sometimes what you went through is what makes you who you are. So I always love people that 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 come from a little bit rougher. Uh, time because I feel like people that had it rougher and then turned it around are good examples for people that are like oh I live in the streets I can't get out I'm stuck it's like no 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 like being born and I, I heard this the other day I interviewed a guy the other day that told me this and it's stuck with me ever since he said being poor is not your fault but dying poor is yes and I was like I never heard anybody say that so I wrote it down and I've told that like 10 people lately I'm like listen how you were born, it's not your fault, but how you end up, it is your fault. And that really just hit me because I used to be, you know, a little on the wild side myself. And uh, and now I'm like, you know, this church going grandma, helping people all over the world, praying on people and all this crazy stuff. And if you wouldn't know me back then, you'd be like, that cannot be the same person. <laughs> yeah. And, and so... <laughs> Like when people like one thing you'll learn about me is I'm like very uh, like I don't like to tolerate like excuses and nonsense. And a lot of times people will say, oh, this is the reason this is holding me back. And this is holding me like I, that's those are all excuses. Like I, I call it fighting for limitation. So, yes, I had like my childhood was rough. But it, like you said, like it's not it's it's my responsibility where I end up. Right. Wasn't my Amen. fault, but it's my responsibility. So I always take that. Like I'm in charge of my life. I'm going to make that into something. And yeah. people make too many excuses about, oh, I can't make it or I can't do this. I can't do that. And even my story, like when I start to compare it and when I try to be grateful, uh -huh. it's nothing compared to some other people out there. Right. Like oh, I was no, talking to my friend a little bit earlier and like my mom passed when I was, uh, I think about three years ago, maybe four years ago. So thank God I was an adult when she passed, but I have another friend and he lost his mom when he was a a child like yeah. a, a young child so i always focus on things like okay what's the best um you know what's the how can i make the best of this situation and i'm just yeah. very grateful that my mom lived that long and as other people they lost their parents when they were like much younger yeah. whereas other people that didn't you know they oh you, you understand what i'm saying so no, I, no, I do I, I i do um i mean i know bill and i are older but you know we're in our 60s but his mom and dad both passed away when he was in his 20s and yeah. 
And I mean, and that's, I know people lose like kids as teenagers, but he's had no parents his entire adult life. I'm just like, wow, it's so weird because like both my parents are still alive. So it's kind of hard for me to relate. But um, my sister passed on breast cancer and her kids were only nine. And I was just yeah. like, wow, that I can't believe like that just happened. My sister's dad and my little niece and nephew are nine years old. Like that's terrible. Jesus. And it is. I tell you, it, we all come from something. And I am with you. I don't like excuses. When people say, oh, Dwan, I tried. I can't do it. I'm just like. Listen, I want to hear it because I came from the dirt and I'm here. And so excuses are just, I don't accept them. I always tell people like, listen, if that's all you got, then <laughs> good luck. <laughs> because you can't, you can't change people that don't really want to change. And people I find, I know you probably agree with me. So many people right now are like, oh, you don't understand. I was abused as a child. I was raped. I was this, I was that. And then they let that become their life. And it's their yes. excuse. And then they're 30, then they're 40, then they're 50, then they're 70, and they're still living in this, all these horrible things happened to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, they did happen to you, but how? what are you going to do to get out of that? And people, I, I have a, a friend that's about my age, and and sadly, her father was really abusive, raped her when she was young, but she's lived her whole life drinking and not committing to society and just, and all kinds of this happened when I was a kid. I'm like, girl. Like you've been an adult for 40 years. Mm -hmm. You have to somewhere stop with the excuses. I'm like you. I have no tolerance for excuses. People start laying out excuses why they can't do something. I'm like, you're talking to the wrong person over here because I don't tolerate excuses. I don't allow my kids. I'm nothing. I'm like, nah, my dad, <laughs> my dad. So remember, me. remember when I said that I let, that's what I meant when I said I'm not the best with people. I don't like to hear people fight for excuses and limitations. That really, <laughs> really bothers me. So how can we get past this is what I want to do. I'm a problem solver, so mm -hmm. I don't want to sit around and moping and talk about how you can't do But I want to get past that. Let's solve yeah. the problem. So I'm that's gonna... what I meant earlier. Now, I and I get it. And, you know, the problem is, though, unless people really want to change, mm -hmm. They're going to, cause you know, I'm, I'm 30 years older than you. And I have friends my age that were raised in situations like you that still use that as an excuse. And it's like, you had your twenties, your thirties, your forties, your fifties. Now you're in your sixties. When are you going to stop? And they don't. So what I've come to realize is you can't help everybody. And some people are just going to stay in that excuse zone and that's their life. And some people say, Hey, you know what, Jerome? I appreciate you. I'm coming out of that. Help me be successful. I don't want to be like that either. And some people will pull up, you know, put on the big girl panties and they'll, they'll step up. But there you're, and it took me a long time to realize, especially when I was first starting with real estate investing, because I worked with homeowners and in foreclosure, it took me a long time to realize that like, cause I wanted to help everybody. I thought, you know what? I didn't get them in the situation. I can help them get out, but they're making so many excuses. They don't, I don't think they really want to get out. And it took me a long time to realize that you can't help everybody. And so the ones that just want to stay where they are, I'm just like, you are a passing person in my life. And the ones that want to change, I'm there for you, but only if you want to change. So I think that'll be something for you to think, because you're, you know, you're still young. I mean, you're, I mean, you know, you're in your thirties, so you're a full grown man, but in my eyes, you're like the age of my kids. So I'm like, Oh, you're so cute. And I, it took me a long time until like maybe my later thirties to realize that some people don't want to stop making excuses. Yeah, I, I struggle with that. And I think that I'm learning a little bit earlier than like yeah. you have. So um, I completely understand. Like, I, you, those can't, people, you can't save everybody. Yeah, if you got like a good heart and you want to help people, it could be uh, like a battle. But yeah, yeah I think I'm, I'm I'm realizing. It is. I used to have people I'd work with for months and then they would just like, you know, change their mind or something. And I, my little heart would be hurt. It's like, how could you do that to me? And I was like, you know what? You let people do it to you. So you have to just, I don't know. Yes. You're, you you have to, yeah, sometimes you just have to kind of be hard when you don't want to because yes. the other person isn't going to change and you're not going to make them change. So there has to be a point where you have to stop torturing yourself mm -hmm. because you can't help them. They don't want to be helped. And it's, and it's too sad and it's too bad because you're a really great person. I know you, you can you know help a lot of people. I'm a great person. I know I can help a lot of people. But some people just don't want it. They want to stay. They want to just wallow in like, oh, my God, life's been so bad to me. It's like nobody had a perfect childhood. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody has a perfect adult life. Nobody has perfect anything. I'm not living here with a man that just had a bone marrow transplant that could have died 
you know, like he had a 60% chance of not living. And it's like, we're in it. We're doing it. We're doing great. We just decided we're going to make it. We're going to live. And that's what's going to be. Boom. And there we are. So you just never know. So I love your heart. I love your heart. And I, I totally get. I totally get what you mean because I have some of those same feelings towards people. It's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Does yeah, I know. I know you're a coach and sometimes? you're an instructor, so I know, I know. you. Oh I know God. you deal with it. I know you deal with it. So I just want to shake the know. life out of people sometimes. Like, yeah. what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. But you can't do it. So all right, so let's go back and talk about your business. But I really love your heart, and you know the fact that you want to help and that you came up rough and you're trying to help other people. That is really like the best thing that you can do. That's like the best person that anyone can be is someone that tries to help other people to do better. I feel like that's like, like that's a great calling. Thank you. It is a great calling. My heart loves you. I'm just like, oh, my heart loves you. Okay. So I love that your story. And again, your mess becomes your message. So you, you got to get really great story. So now when you got to be a little older, like now you're like maybe 25, what do you think? Are you like thinking towards business then? Or are you still kind of like trying to get over what happened? Like, where did the change start? Were you like, you know what? I'm really good at this. Here's what I'm going to do. So it's, it's I'm going to be a little long winded because I have to tell it. So it was, I was about 14. I had all of that rebellion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, five years in between, it was on and off. And then I hit about uh, 19. 19, okay. I went to uh, school for IT. I had this friend, which I grew up with. He was like a rough guy too and he was like i'm going to school to to this computer school and they're giving out free trans passes and free laptops and that was the reason why he went to the school and i was like oh that sounds cool i'm going there but i'm going there for the education i'll get the laptop and the free trans pass which is a bus transit pass uh -huh. but i want to get the education too because i'm like genuinely interested in computers and at that time i think i was like like 19 like my space was out and i was like i need to learn how to make my profile look so decent like everybody else and it was messing around with this stuff and i was like you know what i want to do web design so i can learn how to update my, my my myspace profile i did that for about two years and then i got like a uh, associate's degree in web design and it and uh 21 years old i had a child my son his name's jason uh i had I him about 2010 behind you there that is roman so i got four of these little things you have four around. kids yep i got four of them running around at 21, I uh, I was, so between like 14, I think 19, I got the job and I was working at retail. So I had like, I was working at customer service while I was going to school, got the job. And then I got like another job. I was like, finally, I got the IT job or uh, I think my foot into that place was a customer service job. And then they had an opening for IT and I applied for the IT opening. Uh, for there, I stayed there for about four to five years. Right. And then, uh, Eventually, the corporate people, they would start to like I had like skills and I got like a strong personality kind of. So the manager would become insecure when I was like showcase my talents, basically. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I have to get out of this place. And uh, I thought I was like, all right, let me do some research. I research online. And I, I was about 25, 26. And I wanted to get started in real estate. I was like, OK, how could I get it started in real estate? And I did all of the education. I read all of the books. I watched all of the bigger pockets, podcasts, everything. I did all that. And it was like, um, I need to, uh, basically, I'm not going to get anywhere without a coach. So told this guy, uh, I looked online. I found this guy. He was like, you know what? I'll offer coaching. He offered coaching for $3,000, right? Wow. And I can't remember everything. But I was like, wow, $3,000, that's a lot of money. No way I can afford that. So I think it saved me two to three years, took me two to three years to save up for that $3,000. Wow, because good of for you. Yeah, because of I had the child, right? And I, I had another child in between there too. Because I had that child, they were taking child support from me. And I was like, dang, I, I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it. I was drowning in like money and funds. I was living with my mother, thank God. But I couldn't make it. They didn't get. They didn't care one bit about my other expenses. They was like, look, we're taking this money for these kids. Give us the money. I was like, okay, how can I do better? And I found Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I started reading that. It was like, get involved in real estate. That's when I found that coach and he taught me, it was like a three month module. He taught me like some fundamentals of real estate investing. The main one being wholesale. And I started, I started wholesaling and 
I started wholesaling and I was like, you know what, this is exhausting because I was door knocking and cold calling and talking to people, you know, introvert. I'm like, oh my God, this is draining. And I was like, okay, how can I take my skills, which I'm really good at and apply this to the wholesale business? And that's when I started looking into like uh, Facebook advertising. So um, I thought that IT and tech was the same thing. It wasn't, but that's how I got into like virtual wholesaling through Cause I was like, I'm tired of talking to people and doing the door knocking. It's exhausting. And it's like, what do I do when it's winter or when it's too hot or something like yeah, that? So, yeah. yeah, that took, that led me into real estate. And I think I was, I, I did that for like, uh, that I was like 25, 26. And then this is like coming up on a time where we kind of met each other. So I'm going to stop right there. Cause, I, or, or when we kind of, you know, associated. So I think I was like 29 or 30 or something like that when I, got invited to Aria, but you said 25 to 26 so that's where it stops no 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 and that's right so and you spoke at the Rhea, right that's yes. the Ohio Rhea? yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah the Ohio Rhea is so good I I, I gotta tell you there's so many big giant events all the time mm -hmm. I love the Ohio Rhea. so I think that's really interesting so you started off in the real estate learn about the real estate but then you really realize like your skills or maybe your heart is in like yes. IT and the web design mm -hmm. and because everyone has a phase or a section of real estate that they like better than other parts of real estate investing. So I find that really interesting. And the nice thing about having someone like you then to work with an investor is you understand the real estate side. You're not just a tech guy that's like, okay, I have a client that's a real estate agent and I have a client that's a doctor and I have a client that's a yoga instructor and you're trying to market for everybody. You actually understand the business that the real estate investors are in. Yes. Which makes you even like double valuable. Yes. So I've done <laughs> in that time, like the IT stuff I learned in the virtual, I did like over 90 deals up until that time. So I did like over 90 deals and I was able to uh, understand the transactions, the title companies, all of that stuff e eventually. And I, I'm, I guess I'm jumping the gun, but it's- No, relevant. no, 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 no. No, uh, you're not at all. Because once we get to that point, I always am like, so, like, where did it progress? So, I'm always yeah. just curious where people's mindsets start changing. Because some people, like for me, I was already 30. Mm -hmm. I was just like a party animal. And then when I got to be 30, I'm like, you know, I got kids. I need to straighten up. Like, I need to get my shit together. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm always curious where people start making that mental transaction. And for you, or transition. And for you, it was like 19. You got into school, got into web, got into that, got into real estate. So, how old were you when you did your first deal? 26 or 25 and let me the mindset i never answered you directly what changed my mind mm -hmm. like what made me took took me from that little while whatever it was when i had my son because i'm like you know what if i keep living like this he i won't be around for him and that wasn't good for me remember how angry i was okay. i was like i don't want him to be that angry and i don't want him to be that hurt so if i continue down this path he will be that way and i don't want to do that so that was the mindset that was the shift that was the thing that clicked it when I had my son. It was for me too. I mean, I was 30 when I had my daughter, but that's what changed it for me too. Cause all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm actually responsible for a human now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I gotta and stop even, clocking and I would and do, party and I gotta stop all that stupid stuff. I got a human I'm responsible for. And I was very violent. Like I'm a, I'm a do stuff kind of person. And it's like, even if like you go out and you harm somebody else, what if you get arrested or something like that? You won't be around. Yep. So that was my mindset. I was like, I, I need to be here for them. And it also helped humble me. Like, how can you do, how can you apply the energy that you have to something else? So Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I, I love that about your story because there are a lot of people that they never do change. They have kids and they don't change and they don't, you know, but you, you lived without your mom for a while and you didn't want that to happen to your kids. So, you know, like that was a, I mean, kids are a blessing anyway. But that was a really big blessing for you because that's what really got you to like, hey, I need to like, I need to get together here what I'm doing. And now you have four kids. How great is that? Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate each My one of them. My son is they 31 and he's got four. So we have three kids. So I had one, Bill had two, and we got married when they were young. So we raised them all together. And I'm like, so I always tell the kids, I'm like, listen, my son it has four kids and the two girls have none. I'm like, he, he possesses all the grandchildren. So he is therefore the favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl's like, oh, come on. I'm like, hey, y'all got no grandkids. He's got all four of them belong to him. So he is the golden child. And right. I, I tease my girls like, come on, girls, get on the stick. 
But my girls I, are like in their 30, 35, they're 33. They're just like running around. It's like, come on, girls. Oh, man. They got kids. Clock, clock is ticking. I tell them all the time, but they're, I mean, they all, they own rentals, they own buildings, they own things. So they're all doing good. But it's like, come on now. But I have four grandbabies. I'm telling you, they are just the greatest thing. I, I'm, I love having grandkids. It's like, it really is something you love them so different than the way you love your own children, but it's, it's such a different love. Oh my gosh. It's like, I would just melt over those kids. I can, I can only imagine. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm looking forward to it or I don't oh, know if I can, can't say I, I can't wait or, but I, so oh. I, I, I can't wait, I guess is the best way to put it. It is really, because I loved my kids. Grandchild. We had, Bill and I got married. We had three kids. We had a lot of money. We were traveling. We had, we hired a tutor to travel with us so the kids could be out of school. We had like the best time. And I loved every minute with my kids. But I'm telling you, there is something about a grandbaby. I don't know what it is, but they just like, Oh, they just like murder your soul. Like you're just like you are in their hands. You are oh. literally silly putty, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's so amazing. So I always tell people like, and that old T-shirt, like you know, uh, what's that saying on those T-shirts? If I knew grandkids were this great, I would have had them first. You yeah. know, it's on those T-shirts, but it's like, oh, there's some. So you have that to look forward to. Uh, but okay. you know what? Raising your kids, I, I loved being a mom. I loved raising my kids. I traveled yeah. with them, took them everywhere, and we and I, and I was a really involved parent, and I loved raising my kids, so I love all that. And so now, do, so um, so I know we met at the Oria. Do you go and speak a lot, or are you mostly working for people? Um, I do, I do like a little bit of each. I I do speak a lot. I do I do a lot of speaking engagements, and so we basically we we run a marketing agency. Uh -huh. for like whatever people needs help with tech marketing uh, we can help them with and i also do like speaking so the speaking is to generate leads i'm also a teacher and instructor so i am a licensed real estate agent for right. exp realty and i've run a, we run a weekly class where we teach people uh some of the stuff that we're talking about marketing and tech so well, i'm gonna super highly recommend you because i love everything about your story and i love the fact that you're young and you're into the tech and you're into that because there are a lot of real, I mean, there's a lot of new young real estate investors your age, but there's a ton of us that are my age. And let's just face it, we weren't raised with all this stuff. I mean, I feel pretty excited when I can just like post social media on my phone and like not mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I started a YouTube page all by myself. And I'm like all excited about that. So, uh, so I get it. So, and, and people do need that because again, if they're going to be investing, they need someone to do all that back and stuff because it's really time consuming. It, even if you're good at it, it can still be time consuming. Yeah. You need like the right processes. You need the right systems. And sometimes it's so much out there. You just need to know, okay, what's the one thing that I need? And that one thing that I need, like, is it going to be easy for me to do? Yes. No, maybe like what, what structure do I need? What, huh? uh, who's going to do this? Am I going to do it? Is somebody going to do it for me? Like you need yeah. a, uh, you need discernment about those things. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You need a team. I, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like, you got to have a team. You got to delegate. You got to just trust other people to do the things that you're not great at. But I know a lot of people, they're like, no, I'm going to do it all. But honestly, when you try to do it all, I think that's what makes people get burned out. You do get burnt out. And like another service that we offer is like we kind of help people like write books. And I was talking to a woman like we just had an expo like uh, Saturday and she was like, yeah, I'm working on it. And it's like, OK, how long have you been working on it? And she's like, it's been a couple years. And I, I'm reading like this other book called uh, Authority Marketing. And the average person takes two to three years to get like their book out because they're so overwhelmed. They're trying to figure the process out. And it's like, look, just work with someone that already understands the process or understands this tech stuff. That's like yeah, a big hurdle for a lot of people yeah. and get it out. Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's another thing. People, oh, my God, it's not going to be perfect. I don't want to have do it it's like. Look, you got to get something out, right? Nothing ever comes out perfect. No, it doesn't. Nothing ever comes out perfect. You got to you get it out and then you continue to improve and you work on it. And there is a uh, quote by Grant Cardone. And he says that the perfectionist is a liar. And I couldn't agree more. I don't know. I don't have the entire context of the quote, but he wasn't lying when he said that. And I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree. People are so worried about being perfect they to are. the point where it becomes selfish. And actually, I have it right here. So 
The perfectionist is a liar and is selfish. Perfection is just a nice way of saying that I'm not doing anything to move my business forward. That was by Grant Cardone. And I absolutely wow. identify with that quote because so many people are worried about being perfect when they have a message that need to be that needs to be out there and delivered. They have a service that people need to gather or gain from them. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because I, I do agree with that. When I first started my podcast, you know, I, I studied about shows and read all this. And I see people that like edit every little um and ah and all yep. that. And I thought, Lord have mercy. If I have to do that, I am a little bit of OCD kind of a perfections person. Uh -huh. like, I'm going to lose my mind. So I thought I made the decision. We're just going to record it. However it comes out, it just comes out. Because if I have to go back and try to correct every little thing, I will never get a show out. Yeah. And I, me too, like there's a, there's a, uh, assessment and like, I can, I legitimately have, like, I'm really, I really care about details and people always say, I'm a perfectionist. Like, aren't we all, we're all perfectionists, right? Yeah. We all want things to be perfect. We have to get past that. We have to get past ourselves, not want to be perfect and get the thing out there. So yeah. just like you, I'm like, look, uh, these podcasts are high. Like I teach a video marketing, like how can you get out there? And that's what people come up with. Oh, I don't want to be perfect. I'm saying, um, I'm saying, ah, it doesn't work that way. You have to get something out there. Like nothing you see is perfect. And all of that edited content that you see out there, it's it's edited. That's why it's perfect. There's another <laughs> quote that I like to, there's another quote that I like. I'm with you so much. Imperfect consistency beats perfect inconsistency. Amen. It truly so, does. So they're so worried about being perfect. Meanwhile, you got people like me, people like you just out there running, doing what? it, doing it, doing it. Yeah. And they never even got the product out to the market because they're worrying about being perfect. Worrying about. I've gone back, you know, I've been doing these. I'm in my fourth year right now. So I'm, I'm like getting close to my 300th episode. And I went back not too long. Well, I mean, we're, we've been here in this salt, small space for a really long time. So I've had a lot of free time. And mm -hmm. um, so I went back and watched some of my first shows. I was like, oh my gosh. But I thought, you know what? If I would have even tried to edit those back then, exactly. I wouldn't be where I'm at now. So I just like, Put them out, you know, just here they are and just learn. And this is who I am. And this is who my guests are. And here's who we are. And I've had a few people that have been like, oh, my gosh, I didn't mean to say that. Can you edit that out? And I'm like, no, no. Right. I told you before, there's no editing. Oh, no. Yeah. I didn't mean to say that. It's like, no, yeah. I can't. I cannot start because if I start, I don't know where I'll stop. Yeah, so just I agree. Be. You see, I'm glad you like that. I see. I love that about you. I love that too. Okay, so it's just. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple of random questions. What's your favorite band? Do you have like a favorite band of all time? I don't have a favorite band. Do you have a favorite singer? Like a favorite? Like this is my all time. This is my person. No, I, if I had to pick like music, it would be. Uh, I'm. I'm. A, I'm also a video game. I like video games. Uh -huh. So it would probably be like a. a video game soundtrack and the only video game soundtrack I can think about right now is like Final Fantasy. So and I don't know who the I don't know who the artists are. It's like a compilation What's it of called different Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy. Oh, Fantasy. Final. See, I don't game at all. Yeah. I so, tried I, for a while, but um I have an addictive personality. And I started, I don't even know, way back trying to do a little gaming with my kids. And I find myself up like, you know, for 12 hours doing it. I'm like, oh, my God, I <laughs> can't do this. <laughs> so it's like, I just can't. I have to be all in or all out on things. Yeah. Okay. So what's your favorite food? You have like, if you're like, oh, my God. This yes. Is my favorite thing in the world. I was just talking about it. Sushi is my favorite food. Oh, I absolutely sweet. love sushi. So. Me too. And it's so weird how many people I find that don't eat it or don't like it. I don't like it. It's raw fish. They don't, but they don't know. It's like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, they never even it tried is. it. They didn't even oh, consider God. it. They just okay. automatically think about raw fish and there's like, oh my God, I don't want to do that. I yep. married one right here. It's like, ew. And I'm like, listen, dude, I love sushi. So you're going to have to figure out how to learn it or go with me to restaurants and sit there and eat nothing. So he eats a California roll and he thinks he's eating sushi. It's like, oh. <laughs> I got a California What's roll today. It's like, you're so cute. What's but your he, favorite food? Sushi. Oh, nice. Oh, man. Nice. I love sushi. I just eat. Oh, I yeah. love sushi. They're, I love all of it. Everything, every roll, every fish. I love everything about it. I could just eat. If I had only one thing to eat for life, I would eat sushi. Yeah, me too. It's totally. so much variety here. And it's so delicious. So good. so good. Okay. Now, what's your favorite part of the day? My favorite part favorite of the day. Time? What's your favorite time of day? My favorite time of the day, man. Like a every day? Yeah, like everyone has a certain time of day where they're just like, hmm. It would be, 
it, it would be between the night and the morning. Like when most people are asleep, I don't know when though, because it fluctuates. Mm -hmm. So it would either be early morning before everybody wakes up or late night when everybody sleep. I can't pick between the two though. You stay up late? I do. And sometimes I wake up really early too. So it's like this, this weird time window that uh, I got to be more consistent about that, but. No, you don't. You know what? <clears throat> I've interviewed so many people that are like health coaches, mindset coach. They're like, get up at 5 a.m. and da, 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 da. And it's like, dude, my most creative time of day is at night. I'm the person that everyone's in sleep and I'm up doing stuff because my mind is like, woohoo, you know, it's active. And I've tried all that, get up at five, da, 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 and you have all this stuff by eight in the morning. And I'm, I've tried it for years and I'm exhausted. It's like, okay. no, you know what? I am a bat. And that, and I'm happy being a bat. Because I'm up at night and I feel good and I'm fine during the day and that's it. So I get you. Most people okay. say in the morning, I'm always like, oh. Yeah, Whatever. so it fluctuates <laughs> and like what you're saying, I'm trying to, because people say, oh, you got to do it 5 a.m. Rah! Like or in your face. And I'm like, do you really? Because so yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. I keep I keep struggling back and forth between doing that, what they're saying, and then doing what I you know I'm what? Naturally. I spent, yeah. I, I did a whole decade, my entire 40s. Because, you know, I was yeah. married to Bill. We had kids. So we were up every day. I'm like, my kids get up early for school. At that time, they were in high school and they had to catch the bus at 6 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I got up every day and I worked out and did all the things. And I always, for not even for a year or two, for like a decade, I still always kind of felt tired because mm -hmm. my natural clog is to be up late. So now I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop doing that. So now I am like, it is not uncommon for me to be up at like 2, 2.30. And then I sleep till like, you know, 8, 8.30 in the morning. But it's like, but those, uh, but those are my happy hours. And I feel better on my natural clock. So I can tell you right now, forget all that. People are going to tell you that your whole entire life. Do what okay. your natural clock is. Because when you do your natural clock, that's when your body is. Your body has its own creative time. Okay. Your body has its own time that it wants to sleep. And I and I've interviewed so many people on here like you need to be out there. And I'm just like, no, I so I finally in my 50s was like, you know what? I'm not listening to any more people. I'm just going to see when I wake up and see when I go to sleep. Just natural. I go to sleep. I wake up without an alarm clock. I feel good all day. But my natural time is like up to like two or three and then up at like eight or nine. And that's when I feel best. And when I try to deviate for everybody else, I mean, I feel tired all the time. I don't See my have my time. so my time is like very similar to yours. It's like two or three, and then I'll force myself to go to sleep, and I'll get up at five a.m. But it's it's like that time, the mm -hmm. same window is my time too. So that's interesting. I stopped forcing it, and I have all kinds of people I interviewed. They interview me. They go, "Oh, so what time do you get up and start your day?" I'm like, well, I wake up at eight, and then I have breakfast, and maybe I go for a swim, and then I do this, and then I start working at noon. Oh my god, how do you work? You miss everything. It's like. No, I don't miss anything. I work during these hours because I feel good. And then I watch a little TV or something with my husband at night. And then I do stuff during these hours because I'm super creative. And my brain's on fire. And I sleep until I wake up. So I stop letting people tell me that because everyone's been telling me forever. I'm like, you know what? No, that's not <clears throat> that's not how this body works. So take that into account while you're young. I am. Save watch. Save yourself. <laughs> watch me. Save yourself now. Oh, all right. So just real quick again, tell people one more time how they reach you. I like your information. I mean, the show notes a couple times. Yeah. So the best way to reach me, uh, people before profits, right, is JeromeLewis.com, right? That's how you can connect with me personally, social media, my phone number, everything is there. So what's your handle on Instagram? Jerome Lewis Jr. So J-E-R-O-M-E. -E I know -E I follow you, but. I don't know what your handle is. So Strom Lewis Jr. Yep. Yeah, I like all your Instagram stuff. I follow everything you do. I'm always like, like, oh. like, 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 like. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So I kind of do, I like to do a little review at the end. So mm -hmm. um, when I interview people, I call the session Inside the Minds of Today's Millionaires. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting inside the mind of other people doing other things. And, and, and if you're a girl, you're my bad, badass boss babe. And when you're a guy, you're my wicked smart man. So I like to kind of just do a little bit of a summary because, I, you know, we talked about a lot of really random things. But I feel like interviews like that are, um, I feel like they're more natural. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the end, they're more interesting. Because then you have people that are like, send me a list of your 10 questions. And it's like, mm, no, just ask me questions. Because if I, if you send me 10 questions, 
and you send everyone the same 10 questions and then they see you on my show, they're like, oh, I don't need to listen because he asks the same 10 questions all the time. So people know if they see you on my show, we talk about stuff. And gotcha. they listen. And I get a lot of really good reviews. I mean, I have, I mean, at this point, I'm like close to 2,000 five-star reviews from people like, oh, I love the way you talk to people and interview and get to know people. So, okay, so we're going to start off from Lua, 267-888-1085. You're 33. You have four kids. And you are uh, basically into tech and marketing and um, principal strategy tactics for real estate investors. When you were a kid, you were a little bit of a hooligan, which I love that word because nobody uses that word hooligan anymore. <laughs> That's a great word. I was a little bit hooligan too. And uh, abused by your mom, but you know, maybe not noticing. You were rebellious. You, had, you were angry when you were a kid, violent. All those things, you know, and the thing that's the most important is that you recognize that and you worked yourself out of that. And that is the most important thing. So you got a little bit older, 19, you went to IT school, you got a free computer, you got a free bus pass, you learned web design, and you realize like, hey, this is what I really, I, I dig this, this is my thing. And then you start doing virtual deals, you worked with Rich Dad, you did 90 virtual deals, and then you found out that your heart of real estate really is working with people on marketing and the strategies and the tactics and helping them do that because that's what you like as your portion of the real estate investing world. And you uh, don't have a favorite band, but you like the soundtrack to Final Fantasy. So I'm going to have to listen to that now because whenever someone gives me music that I don't know, I go and listen to it because I, I feel like I have a really good understanding of like all music. So when I hear one I don't, and I've only like three or four times didn't know. And I was like, wow, okay. So I'll be YouTubing that, listening to that today because have to hear everything. It's you love a lot of say, my man, you and I met at the Ohio Rhea. You technically like the late night, but you're letting people try and talk you into that 5 a.m. getting up and doing your thing. Don't do it. I'm telling you right now. Save yourself. Um, and uh you have four kids, I think I said you have kids, and then your first child was it really changed your life and changed your heart and got you going in the right direction. And kids are awesome and they'll do that. And Jerome Lewis.com and you that's it is that uh is that a little bit of what's inside the mind of jerome lewis that is a little bit of what's inside the mind see i take a few notes i write down things like oh that's an interesting point i'm gonna write that down and i love the fact that you saved up and hired a coach it took you a while to save up because honestly people need to have coaches and mentors that know more than they do like you know more than than people do with all the the marketing and um and the design and, and so all that stuff, because having someone that knows that saves you decades of frustration. Absolutely. All right. I so folks, uh, I'm going to be on Jerome's podcast. Tell me the name of your podcast. The Remarketing Podcast. The Remarketing Podcast. I have that written down. So I just like for you to say it. People hear your voice. All right. So you can hit me up at Dwanderful, D-W-A-N-D-E-R-F-U-L. I took Dwan and Wonderful and made a new word. And Dwanderful.com. I've got four free eBooks for you. I'm on Facebook, Dwanderful, Instagram, Dwanderful, YouTube, Dwanderful, Real Estate Investing, uh, TikTok, Dwantastic. So uh, I'm everywhere. Find me everywhere. But I also want to ask you all to do a favor. If you like the show today, I want you to write a five-star review and write something really nice and subscribe and follow because Jerome and I do these podcasts and podcasts are a labor of love and they are a lot of work and um, we can't grow and be better without you. So if you like it, leave some review, follow, share and help us be around the world. Okay, so Jerome, I have one final thing. And this is a parting word of wisdom, but it can only be a word, a single word. What is your parting word? That's going to be our word of the week. Temperament. Ooh. You know what? You're the first person that's ever used that word. Temperament. That is a good word. What do you mean by temperament? I mean, we, as humans, we are very emotional and we need to learn how to be in control of our emotions instead of the other way around. Could not agree with you more. Temperament is a great way. That's what I thought you meant. I was like, I'm just going to get it out there to be sure. Because we are emotional and people like fly by the seat sometimes. It's like, you can't make it through life like that. You got to learn how to keep that under control a little bit. I have really enjoyed having you on today. You've been so super fun. I'm super excited to 
to see you again and hook back up with you again since the Oria. That was like what five years ago with the Oria. It was like three. Was it three? Yeah, you know what? Three years ago was the last time I was there in person because we started with my husband and all the crazy, and so it's been a, a journey. So yeah, I think that was three years ago, and like two years ago they did it online. I was on there, and then I haven't had a chance to go back. I want to go back, but I won't be able to go this year because we won't be able to travel and fly and stuff like that. But it's a great place. And I got to meet you. And now here we are. Absolutely. I'm happy, that, I'm happy that we reconnected. All right. So thank you again for being on the show. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. And remember, we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And remember that the truth is in the red letters. Okay, everybody. Ciao. Thank you, Jerome. You are a rock star. You are so welcome.